you. What a, what a delight to be here to celebrate the receiving of this gift. Frederick Buechner, uh, a Presbyterian minister and writer, once said, if you want to know who you are, as opposed to who you might think you are, just watch where your feet take you. Mm -hmm. And we're here to remember that we are people who want our feet to take us alongside the vulnerable and the marginalized, people who want to travel with those who seek uh, for wisdom, people who want to journey with those who are sure that the pathway is love. So may the people who walk this labyrinth, who are troubled and unsettled, walk their way into peace and then walk their way out to make peace in the world. And may the confused who walk this labyrinth walk their way into clarity and wisdom. And then may they walk out to live their truth in the world. And may the broken who walk this labyrinth walk their way into wholeness and then walk out to live in the world with compassion. And may everyone who walks this labyrinth and walks these grounds know that the pilgrimage finally is into joy, into joy, and full of love. Amen. Amen. Rob Cabelli is a rabbi at Beth Israel. And has And, and brings, you actually walked here today, didn't you? No, I'm you didn't, not, you didn't I, did, I wasn't able to. Okay. I'm, I'm under the weather a bit. Okay, so I was going to say, though, is I, for me, it's especially special that you are here today on your Sabbath to share with us the Sabbath blessings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I assumed when I was being asked to offer a blessing that you really wanted me to tell some stories. <laughs> so forgive me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a few stories. <laughs> First, a story about, well, someone not being in synagogue on the Sabbath on Shabbat and instead walking. And I'm not speaking of myself, I'm speaking of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, who was out walking with Martin Luther King and many others on the road to Selma. And he was asked, Rabbi, you're not in the synagogues praying. What are you doing here? And he said, I am praying with my feet. <laughs> Story number two. <laughs> this is a story about the nature of land and our relationship to it. We hear about our connections to land and land that's ours and land that isn't ours and land that our ancestors have grown up with and on. And so this is an ancient story that harkens from a time when people were farmers. And a farmer was seen carrying big rocks from his field and throwing them over onto the adjoining public thoroughfare. And somebody walking by a passerby, a righteous man saw the farmer doing this and he said, you foolish, foolish person. Why are you taking stones and rocks from a place that does not belong to you and throwing them into a place that is yours? Naturally, the farmer thought the passerby was slightly insane and ignored him and kept doing what he was doing. But the years passed and the farmer lost his ownership of the field, as happens. And some time later, he was walking along that very same public thoroughfare and he stubbed his toe and tripped on one of those rocks. And in that instant, he knew it was one of those rocks that he had thrown there. And that conversation was all of a sudden clear and illuminated before him. And he said, now I know what that wise man was speaking of, that I was throwing rocks from a place that did not belong to me onto a place that is truly mine. A thought about ownership and time. 
and then a third story. It comes from the Torah readings, the readings from the Hebrew Bible that were read just today in the synagogue, the story of Jacob, that, that wanderer, that traveler, who at the beginning of his journey, as he went into his own labyrinth, a very troubled young man, he put his head down on a rock, and he dreamed a dream of God, of ladders, of angels, and he woke up with a start and said, How awesome is this place? God is here and I didn't even know. He was just at the beginning of his journey, just at the beginning of his labyrinth. A journey that never ended, but at least he had, 20 years later, a circular connection when he met up with his brother, Esau, from whom he parted in great hatred and enmity, fear of his life 20 years earlier. And what did he say upon seeing Isaac and kissing, excuse me, Esau and kissing him? He said, seeing you is like seeing the face of God. Mm -hmm. He went in his labyrinthine journey, Byzantine journey, we might even say. <laughs> yeah. He went from imagining that God was in this one place because he happened to see God there to recognizing that God was in the eyes and face and persona and being of his brother of long-standing distrust and fear. And ergo, God is in each and every face and God is everywhere. But it takes a journey for us to recognize this. And so I want to offer a brief blessing. I've told my requisite three stories. I can <laughs> say no more. Um, a brief blessing. Rebono Shalala, Master of the Universe. Barech et hamislul hazeh. Bless this path. Tehi hamislul hazeh. Let this path be arucha. Let it be long or kitsara or short. Kamo shenit barhu, kamo shenit starech, just as it needs be. Tehi dracha shalom vishalva, may it be a path of peace and serenity. Lichol hacholchim ba, to all who walk upon it. And may they be blessed. And may the world be blessed through them and through us. Amen. Amen. Amen.